name is John Flutter. I'm a dentist. I was born in England and now work in Australia. Yeah. And rather than the traditional approach to orthodontics, what we do is look at the cause of the problem and then try and address the cause. And we're now fairly clear on what the cause of the problem is. Where anybody's teeth are, or where they're being pushed by the muscles of the lips and the muscles of the tongue. And so what we're trying to do is help children to grow up with their mouths closed. Most children have their mouths hanging open most of the time and when the mouth is hanging open the tongue drops from the roof of the mouth. So what we try and do is to train the children to have their lips together and the tongue in the roof of the mouth and to do that they have to breathe through the nose. Um, I've been a dentist for 42 years. I've been doing orthodontic treatment for 42 years. And I have a general practice, I'm not an orthodontist, I have a general practice. And we're confronted by children like this all the time. And uh, when we look at these patterns that this boy's got, what do you see here is the major issue that this boy has? What's he breathing through? He's a habitual mouth breather, isn't he? And the result of that is he has some irregularities of his teeth. And it's very easy to look at this as a problem of someone with crooked teeth. And his teeth are crooked. And one of the problems that we have in therapy today throughout the world, that orthodontists tend to look at this as a problem of crooked teeth. And so what they do is they think, what mechanics, what system can we put on here to move those teeth into a better position? What I'm trying to say is, is that that boy is a sick child. How do I know he's sick? Because he has crooked teeth. You see, when you get good facial growth and development, you end up with straight teeth. And so if you see a child who hasn't got straight teeth, then you know there's some imperfection, some problem with the growth and development of the cranium. I mean, what's in the cranium? Nothing really important, is there? I mean, <laughs> your brain, pituitary gland, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, nothing really important in there. And so is it important if that part of the, of the body has grown well? It's a pity, really, that the dentists got a hold of this area of treatment because they look upon it as a dental problem. But what he has is a breathing problem. And so this girl has a poor swallowing pattern and that's where the teeth are. And sometimes, this is the same girl, untreated. She's now a teenager. And the patterns she had when she was six or seven, she's still got now. And if you look at her teeth, if we look at her teeth, it moves on, there we go. <coughs> that orthodontists are fitting braces on children like this today. And the problem is not that she's got crooked teeth, although she does have crooked teeth, the problem is that her mouth is open, she breathes through her mouth, she's got a low tongue posture. And by her age, the vast majority of her cranial growth is complete. So when do orthodontists like to start orthodontic treatment? At what age? About? 11, 12, 13? We like to see children 3, 4, 5 years of age. That's when the problem is evident. So this is the girl. This is a really tough orthodontic problem now to try and get her teeth straight, whereas at age six or seven, that would have been a relatively easy case to correct. When you see children that are habitual mouth breathers, then not only do they have crooked teeth, of course, but they're also sick children. What I say is to parents, the single most important thing you can do to improve a child's health is to establish nasal breathing. And so that's what we're trying to do. As my part of my, my orthodontic dental treatment is to try and get healthier children for life. And you'll only get that if you establish nasal breathing. And if you fail to establish nasal breathing, then the child will have crooked teeth because they will have an interrupted or abnormal growth and development of the face.
and the jaws. About 80% of children are growing up with crooked teeth today. Two or three hundred years ago, almost nobody had crooked teeth, and now almost everybody has crooked teeth. Posture, breathing, straight teeth. They all go hand in hand, and it's a symphony. It's a, a combination of many things that's going to give us good growth and development. But one of the problems with posture is that it starts in the feet and it goes to the head. And so if you want to get straight teeth, we start by looking at the feet. I don't treat anybody's feet, but we look at them. What we say is straight body, straight teeth, crooked body, crooked teeth. I'm not advancing when I stand here, but I am when I stand here. Because if the feet aren't well balanced, then the pelvis will be rotated. If the pelvis is rotated, then the cranium will be out of balance. And if you've got a cranium this shape, trying to get the teeth straight and ignoring the structures of the bones of the cranium is, in my view, a mistake. It's not possible for everybody to have perfectly straight teeth because the postural effects of the uh, the poor posture leading to shoulder high, shoulder low, ear high, ear low, leads to the bones of the cranium being distorted. But when people have got feet that are pronated, and most of our children do have feet that are pronated, the pelvis is rotated, we get a lordosis in the back, and the kid's like this. And the mouth's open, and the tongue's low, and they breathe through the mouth. And if one bone in the cranium is distorted, they'll all be distorted. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. And the bones of the cranium, including the jaw bones, get distorted, and then the teeth will appear crooked because the bones are distorted. And so if children want to, if you want to have healthy children, they need these four patterns. They need to have their lips together at rest, tongue in the roof of the mouth, breathing through the nose, and have no muscle movement on the subconscious swallow. And if they grow up with those patterns, they will have straight teeth. And if they're missing any of those patterns, then they won't have straight teeth. So, this is a problem that's very much associated with our modern civilised world. I had the good fortune to be able to do some voluntary dentistry in a tiny island in the Pacific. It's not that far from Australia, but it's a long way from here. And I went and lived in a community on this island. There were 90,000 people in the island. That was typical of the evidence of the, of the teeth of people on Tana. They've, they've not had any orthodontic treatment. They've not had any dental treatment at all. I was the first dentist on the island ever to go there. But that's what normal healthy teeth grow like when we grow up in a healthy environment. And this is some children that are um, from another part of the world. These were children that were displaced by some flooding in, uh, in Pakistan a few years ago. And look at the facial development of these children. Really nice facial development. And we talk about keeping the mouth closed. How many of those children have got their mouths open on that slide? One. One. And he's got crooked teeth. I mean, he will have, no question about that. I can see just from there that he's got crooked teeth. The majority of the other children have perfectly straight teeth. Which is what humans have been doing. We've been here for 150,000 years. It was only when we developed this soft food. The muscles that we use to chew the food with are the same muscles we use to hold our mouths closed. So that's how the kids are. Mouths open. And, and you say to them, they can't eat the crust. Don't like in the crust. We cut the crust off the food for them. And we cut the food up small for them. And we feed them slop. And so they don't develop the sort of musculature they need to chew properly. And those muscles are the ones they use to hold their mouth closed. <laughs> so they have their mouths open. And the tongue drops from the roof of the mouth and they've got crooked teeth. But this is the exercise moment. Everybody bite their back teeth together bring their lips together. Now the question is, where is the tongue at this moment? For most of you, the tongue is now touching the roof of your mouth, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So then keeping your lips together, let your back teeth separate three or four millimetres. For many of you, your tongue will now drop from the roof of the mouth. Is that so? Okay, now keeping your back teeth separated, open your lips two or three millimetres. Where's your tongue now? 
nobody, virtually nobody is tongue is still up in the roof of the mouth. And what happens is the growth and the development of the face is such that it's the tongue up in the roof of the mouth and the teeth erupt around the tongue. The top jaw is the shape of your tongue. And when we, the, the, the human genome will do the rest. If you've got the tongue up in the roof of the mouth, your jaw size, your tooth size will match. You'll jaw, grow a jaw. Every child's got the genetic potential to grow jaws to match their teeth. When the top jaw doesn't grow adequately, it doesn't grow forwards. And so the whole upper jaw is set back within the cranium, within the head. Now imagine where air goes when you breathe. Air goes through your nose and down here, down the nasopharynx. The f here's your upper jaw. The further back your upper jaw, the less room you've got in your nasopharynx. And the narrower your upper jaw, the narrower your nasal passages. Upstairs, downstairs, downstairs the mouth, upstairs the nose. One piece of bone separating the nose from the mouth. Narrow upper jaw, narrow nasal passages. Narrow upper jaw, small pharyngeal airway because the upper jaw is set back. And so if we see a girl like this, I mean you can see her posture, she's an habitual mouth breather. She's just closed her mouth with photos. And what are you treating? You're treating this or are you treating the teeth? So she can't breathe through her nose. Her nose is small and her pharyngeal airway is small. So that's what we do as a dentist. We make the top jaw bigger and also bring it forwards. I don't want to go into the technicalities of that, but making a top jaw bigger and bringing it forwards, that was 12 weeks between those two images there. Math breathing starts for many children in the first weeks of life. So this uh, is a, a, an infant who's less than two minutes old, um, delivered with a technique where the, the infant is never separated from the mother, and no handbook, no manual, and no, nearly. <laughs> yes, yeah, finally. <laughs> Finally manages to do it. And that is the first moment when they start to develop the upper jaw correctly. That's where facial growth and development starts. The tongue is up in the roof of the mouth, trapping the nipple between the tongue and the palate, and it's that upward, forward pressure of the tongue that's driving the development of the upper jaw, driving the development of the airway. And this is what I call the infantile swallow. They're using two groups of muscles, the orbicular isoris and the buccinator, in order to express milk from the breast and also to swallow it. And it's that upwards and forwards pressure of the tongue that's developing the upper jaw. Now then, the problem here with the bottle, many problems, but one of them is, as milk is expressed from the bottle, what you do is you're creating a vacuum in the bottle. And that vacuum is released by air going from the mouth into the bottle. Do you understand what I'm saying here? That is the sound of mouth breathing. They have to release the seal against the nipple, and air goes in, and that's how they start mouth breathing in the first weeks of life. Um, the other problems look at the posture of the children when they breastfeed and when they're fed from the bottle. I mean, this is just a poor... I mean, two things. Often it's cow's milk, which is for calves, not for infants. The other problem is, is that the posture's wrong. They're lying on their back and they're drowning. And the other problem is that they don't have a valve in the bottle to allow air to go in. But apart from that, it's perfect. This is true of all mammals. It's, 5,400 species of mammals and humans, one of them. All mammals, the upper jaw size is determined by the tongue. Tongue in the roof of the mouth and the teeth erupt around the tongue. Then the lower jaw will grow to match the upper jaw provided the teeth are in or near contact at rest. That is to say your mouth's closed. If your mouth's closed, the lower jaw figures out where it has to be. But if you're like this, oh, you're, uh, 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 the lower jaw's got no feedback. There's no uh, feedback for growth and development to tell it where to grow to. So it grows to where it's held. Like this. 
what they have to do is keep their mouth closed, get the mouth closed, and the lower jaw, even the growing child, will grow to match the upper jaw. So one of the things we do in the practice, in our waiting room, we've got, it's like a, a spiel round, a game, game room. We've got iPads, we've got Playstations, we've got Lend, all this stuff. And the reason we want to do that is I want to see the children, how they're doing it. We want to watch them when they're like that. They've all got their mouths open. <laughs> and they've all got crooked teeth. I mean